So today we're gonna look at the couple of things you gotta do to your speedy to have launch control and to trigger your fuel pump, your fans and your tech output. Insert launch control. All of this is based on the write-up I read on Speedy EFI's website. All the details are in the description and you can go read up some more if you want to find out some more about the whole soldering ordeal. So we for actually need uh, a ULN integrated circuit and you need a resistor as well as short pieces of wire which you have to solder onto your Speedwino in order to have couple of features so let me I'm just gonna start off with some tips because I don't want you guys to mess out on this and it's found very useful I had to desolder my chip from my board because of the tips that I didn't have so I would advise if you're going to do this you could use a UL in 2003 or a 2803 2003 and 803 are exactly the same the only difference the internal working is exactly the same the only difference is that the 2803 has an extra channel which you won't be using and uh, it's unnecessary so you basically just get whichever one is available and both function exactly the same so I would recommend the 2003 as it has one less channel so probably a little bit cheaper the other thing I would want to mention is that the resistor you're going to use for your tech pull-up resistor should be a quarter watt resistor. I tried a half a watt resistor and it was too tall on the board and would interfere a little bit with the connections. And I used a quarter watt and it has been working quite fine for probably three weeks now. And uh, the third thing is the wire that you're going to use. I recommend going with as thin as possible. I re recommend one millimeter wire. As if you go too stiff of a wire, too thick of a wire, it would actually pull the connections off from your chip that you're going to install. And that's what happened to mine. It pulled the connection off and broke off one of the legs. Okay, so very important point to make for your fuel pump and your relays is that your ignition switch switches on everything so it switches on both relays and that's very important because initially i wired my fuel pump relay to have constant power and only to be switched with the ground don't give it constant power across pin 85 and 86 those two are kind of interchangeable but 85 would usually be your ground so what you're going to do is you're going to wire your pin 85 to your ECU and then you would have your main relay or you could use your ignition switch I used my main relay to switch my fuel pump relay uh, but you could use your ignition switch to switch your um, fuel pump relay as well as your fuel pump is actually controlled by your ECU on the ground end so all you have to do is make sure that you have a positive switched relay for your fuel pump and this should work perfectly and uh, that's how the grounding signal works for all of these uh, outputs are still on their assigned pins according to the speed we know but now this is a v 0.4.3 c let's start off with the clutch input the clutch input is pretty Pretty simple, you don't actually need the ULC, the IC, you don't need this little transistor, you just need to bridge this gap right here. The, the clutch input is an 18, so what you're going to do is you're going to bridge these connections right here from 51 in the first row all the way to the end. So to do that you just solder on a little wire on the back the fourth one from the bottom all the way across and that's complete now you should have clutch input on that point you also have the options of doing a clutch uh, this clutch input what I use is a ground so when there's ground clutch input is activated when there's no ground it's off you can switch it up to do the opposite 
in Dunio Studio. You have to bend up a few of these tabs and cut them off. You're going to have to bend up these two, not the second and third from the bottom. And you have to cut them off. The third from the bottom is actually your pin at the position of pin 51, which is your clutch input. So that bend that up and cut it off. The second one you don't want to use, it's A15. So you're going to cut that off as well. On this side, you do the same. You cut off the third and the second one from the bottom. The fourth one, you bend up on the, on the right side. And on the left side, you keep it in the same position as the first couple of four of them. Over here is what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend it open. You see how this leg is slightly diagonal. So you're gonna bend this open because this, these, now you're going to install this is exactly as I'm showing you right now. Your bottom leg, bottom left leg should go into the ground. So it appears that I forgot to show you guys how to solder the common pin, the bottom right pin. So it should not make contact with the board, with the PCB. It should be standing up. It should only make contact with the resistor and the 12 volt wire that runs from the ECU's power supply. And this other end of this wire, I am going through that little hole all the way around to that IC. Lay the wire down there and solder the other end right onto the 12 volt input of your ECU. So this is going to solder it up onto that pin right there. You're going to solder a resistor from this pin to this pin so you don't have a ground output. So I show you should start off with 10k ohms, 10,000 ohms to 1,000 ohms. So I'm starting off with the 10,000 ohms. I bought these two. One is a 5,100 ohm and the other one is 10,000 ohms. And they are both half a watt resistors. Alright, so I just finished up soldering the board, soldering the IC and the resistor as well as the 12 volt input so i hope this was helpful and if you found this useful like and subscribe uh, to see some more content peace